So today we're going to put this window in the uh, sliding door of the van and I think one of the main things when putting these windows in is preparation. You want to get everything prepped up, everything that you might need ready to hand before you begin. So we have the window, we have the U-channel, we have the sealant. Now the sealant I'm going to stick into a bucket of warm water. Um, it's not the uh, warmest of days today and this stuff can be very um, viscous so if that's warmed up a little it'll flow much better as we put it around the window so that's going to go into a bucket of warmed water uh, we have a decent quality gun silicon gun and I also have some cable ties just to tie that in to the gun uh, because it is very difficult to get out uh, following on from that we have obviously the primer which is for the uh, van door we have a marker pen um, some masking tape we've got some three mil drill bits we've got the jigsaw everything ready to go let's get the van set up so first things first we're just going to clean this panel uh, with some of this degreaser, just a little bit of it. I don't think we want a lot. The panel looks very clean. I did wash it not so long ago. But we're just going to clean that up and make sure we're good for the um, for the bonding material. And we'll just let that dry off for a little. So our first step here is to mask everything up. Um, there's going to be a lot of little shards of metal when we start jigsawing this through and we don't want to get this into the wells and everything so I've just um, taped a old cloth here onto the back side of the door I've also done the same on the front just to stop any metal from falling down and scratching the paintwork now I believe the procedure here is to drill through here and then mark it on the outside and jigsaw around. So, fingers crossed, here we go. So now I'm going to draw around these holes with the marker pen and that should give us our cutting line. Okay, so we have all of this marked out. I have the jigsaw and I've put a larger hole in the top here just to uh, start it off with the jigsaw blade. Now I'm going to go this way around so that I can hold it from the bottom as I do the last piece of the cut. Just on the bottom of the uh, jigsaw, I've taped a piece of cardboard to stop it from scratching the rest of the metal. And I just think I got snagged over there, so it's, it's been a little bit problematic. But I've taped that on a new, so that looks much better. We shall continue. part over. I'm seeing there's a little discrepancy here and take a little bit more off this part here and I'll take a tiny little bit more off that part there. Then we'll file that, clean it up, uh, prep it up and get ready to stick the window on. Okay so we'll file this up and I've got to point to a point where I'm happy with it. <laughs> So I believe the next thing to do here is to put the primer, clean this up, put the primer on it, then put the U-channel in. So that's the job. So with the primer, this needs a good trick. And I'm going to prime it up. I'm going to leave about an inch all the way around there. And then we will put the uh, sealant similarly about an inch in from the window. We should do it for that. 
Now again, this is very runny stuff and very black stuff. So you've got to be pretty careful with it, I think. Let's get some on that little doofer. And then Now we're going to leave that to go off. Um, still got enough left to do the other window, sorry, the other side of the van. And there it is. All right, so whilst the primer's going off, we're just going to stick this U channel in here. Um, seems to be going in fairly easily. A uh, little bit of persuasion in places with the, uh, with the rubber mallet. Oh, looks good to me. Okay, we've got this pretty much all the way around. I'm just going to snip it here so it joins at the bottom, and then we'll give it a final tap in, make sure everything's good. It's looking good. Okay, so we've got everything prepped up here. Um, there's a point of controversy though. Um, I've seen many different ways to do this. Some people uh, do the um, primer around the window, and others don't. So I asked the uh, people who make these windows which way to go with that and they definitely said no need to put the primer around the window. Indeed if you do you may run out of it and not have enough for the second window. So what we're going to do is use this activating cloth which they do advise to do. And I rub this right the way around the ceramic part of the glass, give that a good going over, and then we just apply the sealant directly to the ceramic area. So we just want to make sure that's good. Uh, we do have two of these here, so we can use the other side of that as well, just give it another go. And we want that to all flash off, which it seems to be doing pretty instantly. Okay, looking good. So at this point we're ready to put the sealant on. Now, the sealant has a V shape here, and I believe you want to put this on this way, with the V facing you, so that you end up with a sort of V shape of uh, sealant all the way around the window. Now this is the top of the window, so what I'm going to do is start here, and come all the way around. And again we want to be about an inch in, which was the same as the um, the stuff on the side of the window. I got to say this is flowing from the tube very nicely. Uh, it having been heated up. Okay, so we're going to just overlap that Move it around this way. We just overlap it there. Now I'm just going to look for any areas where I might have this little bit lower area there. So. Make sure we fill that in. That's looking better. Now, as I say, this is the top of the window, so I'm just using the belt and brace this approach again. Just to make sure we've got plenty of that on. That's looking good. Now, if I look at that, don't see any gaps in it at all, so there's a little one there. Just want to make sure that if there are any gaps, any places where it's risen up, that these are taken care of before putting the window in place. As you can see light through it, essentially. Um, not a bad idea to put a little bit more on.
That's all looking good. Now again, I don't have any suction cups or anything like that. So, just by hand, offer that up. Okay. Make sure we're straight here. Now I'm going to put these on, just to hold it, gaps looking good, gaps looking good there, oh, I look nice and flush here, so I think we're good. Okay, so that's window number one, um, looking pretty good, got to say. Um, Again, very trepidatious thing to do, but all the gaps are looking good. It hasn't fallen off yet, so looks like we're good. Now the other side is exactly the same procedure here. Um, we're going to put the window in here, and this is going to be an opening window. So we're going to get on with that. I probably won't film this. Um, it's exactly the same procedure. Mask it up on the inside. The masking worked very well, by the way. The um, all of the little shards of uh, metal were caught by that uh, cloth that I put down. So that's, that was a good idea. And that worked out well. So on with window number two. Second window's in. Uh, this is an opening window that I've put on the opposite side of the van to the sliding door. There it is. I think the kitchen area is going over here. Now, I'd, the next thing that we're going to do is what you would call the first fix electrics we're going to put some basic wires in to the points where we need them and that will allow us to do the insulation i want to get the wiring in before the insulation so we need a plan we need some idea of where various appliances are going to go pretty difficult to see um but let me sketch it out here is the outline of the van now we're having a rock and roll bed in here this is one thing I've decided so the bed when closed will come to about there when open it'll come to about there um, the rest of this is we're gonna have a long sort of kitchen area down this side and this here will be a tall cupboard going up to the ceiling this here sink hob stuff like that so from the electrics Point of view we've got the electric box here we've got the fridge here we've got the hob ignition to put in we've got this uh, 12 volt USB switch to put in we've got the lights to put in and one other thing we're gonna have a reading lamp here reading lamp and all of this is going to be switched here so all of the uh, tail ends of this want to be switched to here Indeed, I may also put the fuse box in here. So I might put the switching panel, uh, the fuse box, and an idea I'm toying with, I'm not exactly sure, but I may put a uh, um, mains hookup and put some three-point plugs on this area here and also put a um, mains charger in here for the battery. We'll see how that goes. As I say, this is very rough. It's not a dimension, but we just want to lay these wires in so we want to know roughly where they're going and just stick the things in. Okay, so to do this first uh, part of the electrical work, um, what we have here is some, some of these little sticky um, holders, if you will. Uh, they're sticky backed and they just stick to the metal. And you hold the cable in place with a cable tie. So here we've got uh, 50 meters of um, 1.5 mil squared uh, cable. Uh, that's going to, I think the rating for the 1.5 mil cable is 20 amps. And there's nothing in here which is going to take anything like 20 amps. So that's, again, a little bit of belt and braces, but that should be okay. Uh, we also got a tape measure, wire cutters, and we've got some masking tape just to write on the tail ends of the wire exactly what they're for so that when it comes to wiring it all up we won't be totally in the dark now the first thing I'm going to do is just roughly draw on the floor 
um, the dimensions of the cupboards, etc. Just so we've got some rough idea. Again, this is not exact. I haven't measured this out um, perfectly as yet. I was waiting for the rock and roll bed to come so I can ascertain the exact uh, width and dimension of that and then build the cabinets to suit it. But I do know that this back cabinet is going to be about 80 centimetres. It's either 70 or 80, you see, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say it's about, oh, let's go 75. Right, so I just want to put a mark on the floor because it's this area here where the fuse box will be. Um, so all of the tail ends want to end up around this area. I'll just stick them to this wall for now, or maybe put them through here. Uh, for now, leaving plenty on so that we can trim that up and put it in the fuse box later. Okay, so I've decided with this first uh, side where the fridge and the hob and everything is going, um, I'm going to actually run the cable on the outside. I'll put this in a bit of conduit. I'll put this in a bit of conduit when I actually uh, fix it in. But I just want to get the lengths of the cable sorted out first. So we've put a few of those little black holding things there and there's two cables going from here one for the fridge one for the hob right i've left a good couple of foot on that side for the fridge it's going to run all the way along here and then it's going to come to the fuse box which is going to be roughly there so i'm saying roughly there so i'm going to cut that there There it is. So that one is for the fridge. We'll do exactly the same thing again. And this will be for the hob ignition. Snip that off. Zip. Now, what we're also going to have is the wire to feed the fuse box, the um, positive and negative, which are going to feed into the fuse box on this side. Now, that needs to be a broader cable. So I'm going to see if I have any of that. There's some on its way. It's coming with the solar panels. Um, but I'll see if I have any around. I've just checked for that um, heavier cable and the answer is no. But that's okay. We can put these um, 1.5mm cables in now and we'll put the heavier cables in when they arrive. So that's then clipped in. Fairly straightforward. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put one from here for the USB port and from here for the reading light. These are going to have to go up and over the ceiling uh, to get back down into that cupboard. So let's get on with that. Now on this section here for the um, USB is going to go there, reading light there. I've drilled a small hole through the frame and put an O-ring around it. And I've laid those wires across the ceiling. I'm going to do the same thing at this end and bring them back down this way so that we'll end up here for the fuse box. Um, these are little like rubber rings and I have a stepped bit on the drill. So I'm going to drill a 20mm hole through there to get both these wires through and the little rubbers just save it from shaping on the metal. Over time it's going to move. So again, better to be safe than sorry. So I'm going to put a couple of them in. In this one here and another one here I'll feed those wires through I may do another one here and then that will allow the wires to come out to this point where the fuse box is it's a good idea I think to clean these up a uh, little round file here just take the first off it. I'm just going to tie the ends of these together with a bit of masking tape I think that might be easier to get them through the hole. 
and I'll see if I can put a curve on them as well. It's quite flexible wire, but if I can get a bit of a curve on there, get it through there, and then through there. Ah, painless. That's looking good. So that's them in. I made another hole here just to, uh, and cut my finger a bit, just to uh, get that behind this panel. There's a panel going on here. Um, and then the wires are coming through here and there's plenty of room to get into the fuse box. But I did make an error. And the error was, I didn't write on the end of these cables which one was which. I don't think it matters that much. I'll be able to test that when it comes to fitting it up. I'll fit one end of the fuse box and see which one of these goes live. And then I'll know. So the next point of consideration is the lights, uh, the ceiling lights. And I'm going to put some in this front panel. Uh, I'll put some on the middle. And some very close to the rib in the far panel, I think. The only thing there is equidistance. So I'm going to measure from the top of the van here inwards and inwards. And again, this is a rough placement. Um, we just want to get the wires in and leave plenty of lead on them for wiring up there. So I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say that's about 40 centimeters in from the side of the van so we'll make those marks and stick these little stickers on and then get the wires in in place um, the only thing was with the back one slight different placement because I'm assuming the cupboard here is going to be at least uh, 45 50 centimeters this is again depending on the dimensions of the rock and roll bed so I'll put this one a little bit further in um, just so that we're not going to obscure it with the cupboard. So the lights are in, uh, sorry, the positioning is pretty good. What I'm going to do is run a cable from here. This will be the end point of it. Down to the front, across, back up here. Then it'll go back through this hole down here and come out to the fuse box. That's the plan. Okay, so we have the windows in. We have the beginnings of the uh, first fix electrics. Uh, that's it for this episode. If you've enjoyed the video, if you want to see how this progresses, do subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.